Uh, it's Monday night. I'm gonna go over a little bit about the bender, setting it up, getting some stuff done, making the initial bend. Um, show you how to properly put a mark where your bends are gonna start. It's not out here. I've seen some videos where people put it out here. It's not out here. It's a lined up center line between this pin and this guy. I'll show you how to do that in a sec. Now the first thing I do when I get my dies is make the mark where the bend starts. I've seen some videos where people line it up with the end right here. That is not right. Your bend starts where this pin, the center of this pin, and the center of this hole line up. You can see I put a little tiny hacksaw blade mark in it, put some white paint in it, and then I just marked it with a sharpie down here. It's got a little bit of glare on it, you can't see it. If you see this scribe mark over here, I took a rule before I put the die in this and I lined it up on the edge of both those holes, made a scribe mark, it's a one inch hole, measured over a half an inch. This is where your, this is where your bend starts, right here. So anytime you're doing any bending and you have marks on your tube where the bend starts, put it here. Do not line, don't line it up with the outside of the die over here. I've seen a, two videos on YouTube that show it lining up with the outside of this. And what I'm doing now is setting up basically my first bend to check the, because I've never bent inch and 5 eighths 120 wall in this bender yet, so what I'm going to do is bend the first bend, which will end up being my cheater piece for later. If you watch the fabrication series, he goes over what his cheater piece is, and it's basically you make a bend that's 90 degrees, you have your mark in it here, you make a cut in that, and you can basically measure, put a, a um, tape measure, like a tape measure hook hooks in there, so if you're measuring like up to where a bend starts or where you're doing anything, it's it's kind of handy. And also, I am setting the spring back for the die, so I'll set this up. I'll bend this tube to where the on my bender. I will bend it to 90 right there and stop, and then take the whole take it out, and then use my digital protractor to actually measure the actual degree that it's bent. So usually what springback is, it's the amount of tube, it's the elasticity in the tube, so when you bend it 90 degrees and you, you have pressure on it, it's holding it 90, it's 90. As soon as you back the bender off, it springs back. So you bend it to 90, you actually can bend it to any number you want on your degree wheel, but you just have to remember what that number is and then measure and find out because if you, let's say you bend it to 40 degrees, it's not going to be 40 degrees. When you let off the bender, it's going to go back and you're going to end up with, uh, let's let's say, 38 degrees. So, it's all about your bend. This varies from bender to bender. It varies from tube size to tube size. And then your wall thickness. If you have a heavier wall or a thinner wall, every single different piece of tube you bend in this is going to need a spring back measurement. So, that's just something to do when you make your first bend. If you've never bent tube before, you haven't registered what the spring back is for this. And the reason I showed you on the other side with this thing, with the, I had the follower taken out of everything to let it roll out is, thanks flashlight, there you can see, there you can see the mark right there. So it's kind of, if you look, get out here, you can see it's hidden. It's under, it's under this plate right here. So you can see it once you get all this, once you slide your tube in, you can see the black marker mark and you can see a little notch with the white paint on it. But I just showed it to you out here because once the thing's together, it's kind of hard to see. So now we'll start bending. Now the first thing you want to do before you set this to zero, That in there. You 
because you want to take all the tension out of it so it's not loose. The follower is tight, the die is tight, your straps tight, everything's ready to go. Once you have that tight where you want it, Set it at zero, and you start bending. See, we're coming around to 90. I'll try to get it right there is 90 degrees. Now, if you see, this is all tight and tension. And when I back this off, that already jumped five degrees. This is still tight in here. So I'd imagine your spring back is going to be over five degrees. But since this is a like a test piece, a cheater piece, it doesn't matter what degree this is, because this is what we're going to measure. that. Now we'll measure it. Now you can already look at this and tell it's not 90 degrees. So go ahead and zero our protractor out. And I'm just using the the two levels because my protractor doesn't have very long legs on it. So yeah I wouldn't be able to get on the two flats with that. So That says 93.3. Yeah. And it's going from the other direction, so. Ninety-three point four. Okay. So ninety-three point four. So we had 93.4. So what we're going to do is take 180 minus 93.4. It's 86.6. So that bend right there is 86.6 degrees. So that tells us we need 3.4 degrees. That's our spring back. So you can probably just round that up to, it is right in the middle, 3.4. So you can go three or four degrees. You probably go a little hair over four degrees. So you're going to shoot for like three or four degrees spring back on this. So you're going to want to over bend by about four degrees and everything should come out pretty damn close. Now what I just did is I threw it back in the bender and I, bend it, I bent it again an additional four degrees, which you don't want to get in the habit of making like bending something twice because it's not good, but the only reason I'm doing it on this is because this is, like I said, this is going to be uh, the cheater piece that gets used for this kind of eyeballing stuff. And of course. We're at 89.6, so 
I mean, that's pretty damn close to a 90 degree bend, especially since it was bent twice. So. Oh shit, you probably couldn't see that. Kind of tough doing this by yourself on a flat table. Eighty-nine point six. It's pretty damn close for bending it twice. So you're in the ballpark. You're close enough for a manual, non-digital bender. That's pretty good. <laughs> 